Start your life. All right. Yeah. Happy Friday, VV Nation. Ryan here. I'm actually filling in for Glenn. It is his birthday, so he's going to be traveling uh, this weekend. I'll actually be covering his live stream on Monday as well. Hope everyone is doing good. The alert should be going out in just a moment, so we'll give everyone a, a chance to get into the room here. Now, just to make sure you can hear me and you can uh, see me, if there's any technical issues, just put that in the chat box. Uh, Bell says, Ryan, please share some of your option trades so we can learn from them. I'll be honest with you. I uh, got a pretty bad, uh, pretty bad injury um, from snow skiing last week, so I haven't been trading this week. But when I saw the inflation data come out, what was that, yesterday, um, and saw how the market reacted, that's probably when, you know, would have hedged some positions there, especially with covered calls or buying, you know, some puts in general. And you can see the market showing some follow through today for sure. I don't know if you saw my short yesterday. Um, but a lot of the time, you know, the past couple inflation reports, even though they're a little hotter than expected or rose, the market was still continuing to rise. However, in this last PPI data report, market just failed to do so. So we can see the mobile stream. I got the app here in front of me. All the major indices are down right now. It looks like the NASDAQ, at no surprise, being mostly growth stocks, down almost a percent. The Vectorvest Composite down uh, slightly at 0.14%. S&P, Dow Jones, all down today. Might want to buy some soon today. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, possibly. I wouldn't buy too much right now. Let's see your prayers for healing on your shoulder. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that. Um, now, as we scroll through here, you know, just let you know, a lot of our timing signals are still up, but just be cautious. You know, definitely not a good time to be buying new positions right now. The confirmed call is still up. The DEW is still up. Greenlight buyer, um, you know, being uh, neutral right now. Let's see here. And then the primary wave is down. So we've got one red light in the color guard here with the price action of the Vectorvest Composite. <clears throat> you know, especially yesterday. If you look at that drop yesterday, look at March 13th. The BSR was at 1.2. Huge drop the following day on March 14th. Yesterday when the PPI data came out, coming at 0 0.86. So just to let you know, with the BSR below one right now and the primary wave down, we could see a potential confirmed down as early as next week. Now, on top of that, today we're getting that price action follow through. You know, yesterday we had a yellow light. However, today we've got our first green light in the price column of the color guard here. So it's been a you know it's been a while since we've seen a red light there. The market just wants to keep going up, up, and up. But I you know me personally, I think uh, the exhaustion of the market is coming in. By no means do I think a any kind of you know major crash or anything like that, but definitely a you know a healthy pullback is needed right now. Uh, let's see here. Ah, thank you everybody for talking about uh, prayers for my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, it looks like I got a bulge disc in my neck. Um, didn't quite do an MRI yet. Uh, they did an X-ray. Luckily, nothing is broken there. Uh, but I got wiped out by a snowboarder out in Winter Park last weekend, so it's it's been pretty rough. Not gonna lie. Um, but as far as the system, as far as the market right now, you know, we've all been talking about when is the market going to, you know, slow down or take a breath. It looks like we're seeing that over the last two days. That's why essentially I'm telling you, not a good time to be buying, you know, even the Vectorvest 7 software, you know, tells you Vectorvest does not advocate buying any stocks at this time. Do you see a four, see, do you see a four, see a confirm, oh, confirm down in my crystal ball. It would be next week if we got one. Um, potentially, you know, I, I, you know, just to be honest, the market needs a healthy pullback. It's just gone up and up and up. Let's see here. Buy only AMD. <laughs> AMD. I was actually looking at AMD. It just hit below its 20 day exponential moving average. I did not like that candlestick. I think it was earlier this week where you had that huge upper wick when it got into the uh, 220s. If you can move your arms, you're great. I had neck surgery and my right arm hurts like the Dickens. <laughs> well, my right arm, you know, I've got very limited m mobility here. Um, but, you know, luckily, hope, hope, you know, I'm hoping by next week it'll be better. You know, if it doesn't get better, 
then apparently, um, you know, I've got I've got major issues coming my way. <laughs> but if we scroll down here, the thing I want to talk about, look at the advanced declines here. They're almost matched. The advances come in at 47%, while the declines is at 41%. So just be careful. Like I said, you know, only the primary wave is down right now. The DEW is still up. The confirmed call is still up. It's time to be cautious. You know, don't, you know, don't over-exaggerate. Um, you know, don't overplay. Just, you know, two days down doesn't necessarily mean, you know, the end of the world, right? Um, you know, right now is a good time if you're holding positions and they're optionable, you know, covered calls. Always a good idea, right? Put some insurance on those stocks or tighten up your stops. And when the market starts to turn back around, get back in. See, so would a good price for entry into NVIDIA be around 860 if it pulls back before it runs to 1,000? Um John, Ryan, be careful dipping chicken fingers in the chocolate fountain at Golden Corral. Oh, uh, well, Glenn's not here, so I, I doubt I'll be going to uh, Golden Corral, right? <laughs> um, now, let's get in here. Let's go to, ooh, let's see here. All right, we're going to go to premium watch list here. Now, the first stocks we're going to take a look at, some high momentum stocks here. We look at this. We've got Nvidia and Celsius and EME at the top of the list. Even uh, SMCI. So let's take a look at these stocks. So I know a lot of you guys are interested in Nvidia here. You see that level of support comes in just above eight hundred dollars here. So it looks like it's hitting a level of support here. The three is still above the eight, still above the twenty day. Uh, simple moving average as well. So you know, if you're holding NVIDIA, again, the moving averages are still in our favor, but you can see they're converging closer together. So just be careful here. Let's zoom in so you can see that. Now, as far as the MACD, the MACD line did just cross below. So if you're looking at more of a technical aspect here, you know, just be cautious if you're holding NVIDIA, you know, covered calls or, you know, sticking to your stops. Don't let this stock get away from you. Start losing profits and the trade becomes emotional. That's the last thing you want, right? Uh, Mark says, hope you are on the men. That sounds painful. I'm sure the nurse daughter has you as her number one patient. <laughs> um, now we go back here. So NVIDIA, you know, like I said, according to the moving averages, according to some of the technicals here, MACD, if you're holding this position, just be careful because it looks like these moving averages might be crossing over here. But again, NVIDIA, I know that's the number one stock. Betting against NVIDIA is, is a dangerous deal. If you're looking at bottom fishing, um, you know, or buying the dip on NVIDIA, um, the support level came in in the low 800s. So see if you can do that here. But again, the primary wave is still down. So if, are you going in on oil? Ryan? Actually, I own some SJT. Um, that's actually my only dividend stock I own because uh, mostly I trade options. Um, so anytime oil goes down, it's, it dips quite a bit. And I'm, as far as oil, I'm looking for it to break above 85. Um, but oil, you know, if you saw the video last night, there's definitely some good things going on with 80, uh, oil. It broke its downward uh, trend line as far as the sector itself. So a lot of positive things with oil. Um, I'm looking at actually Weatherford right now to potentially get into. But I just want to get some confirmation, like I said, if as far as buying any new oil positions there. But it looks good. Um, let's see here. We got NVIDIA, Celsius Holdings. This has been a popular stock here for a lot of traders. Who's Who holds uh, Celsius? Anyone jump in on the Celsius bandwagon here? Let's see here. Mara bought some XLE this morning. Me. Okay, yeah. So I know a lot of people were buying Celsius. If we look at the moving averages here, let me zoom in a little bit more. The three is still above the eight, both moving averages, moving up, still trending away from the 20 day. Now, so if you're still holding this position, no rush to sell here. Uh, the MACD is still above the signal line. But again, the primary wave is down. The you know That's the first warning sign in the market, right? We've got a red light in the price column with color guard. We've seen more red lights appear. So just be cautious. You know, when you bought these positions, you had a plan. If you if you didn't have a plan, that's your first problem. But you should always have a plan when it comes to you know taking profits, you know tightening stops. I personally like trailing stops or something that ratchets, something that protects profits. You know, I'm not a gain loss kind of person. For example, if I put in a thirty 
gain, 10 loss. What if it goes up 25, 28% and then just drops? I lose all those profits. Now, I can't tell you exactly what stop to use, but me personally, I like something that ratchets, something that protects profits. Um, I got in a C E L H at 55 with a long call diagonal and has been, yeah, I bet it has been a huge winner. Whew. 55. Yeah. Now that stock, I mean, hit a hundred dollars yesterday. Um, again, I don't know what your expiration is on it, Manju, but you know, protect profit somewhere. Uh, you know, I've been in that position when you're up so much, it's hard. Hopefully you got more than one contract so you can, you know, tiptoe out or tiptoe back in. Um, but if you got one contract, you know, again, stick to the plan you had in place. Uh, yes, small position, same with NVIDIA, very small position. You know, I like both of these companies, honestly. They've been rallying quite a bit here. And even the beverage itself, you know, when I went out to Colorado last week, Celsius was everywhere. Um, their drinks were all at the resorts, the gas stations. Here in North Carolina, you see them occasionally, but their display is typically rather small in a lot of the stores here. Um, but when I went out west, I mean, the Celsius display was the same, if not larger, than the Red Bull display. So that tells you how big of a company, uh, you know, how popular of a brand that's coming in. Do they mix it with vodka? <laughs> I don't, I, I'm sure someone has. You know, hit a one if you've mixed Celsius with vodka. I'm sure someone has. Uh, GCT up 18% today on earnings. Woo. All right, we'll get to some stocks here in just a moment. We've got EME here. I know this is another popular stock. A lot of people are trading here. Look at this. It's actually up today. It's bucking the downtrend of the market. So let's take a look here. You know, anytime a stock is moving up when the market's moving down, that's always a good sign. And look at this. Now, if you're holding it, there's I don't see any reason to sell it right now. The three's above the eight, 20 day. All the moving averages are up. Now, take note here, the MACD and the histogram down below are showing a little bit of weakness there in the trend, but we are right at a level of resistance. You can see here, see the high is at 330.88. So if we can break that 330.88, you know, I'd say 330.88, maybe by 31, 31.50, just showing some confirmation there on strong volume. We could potentially see a big breakout here with EME. That actually might be a good play. Um, so yeah, keep that one on your radar here. Now, if we go back, we've got SMCI. What's SMCI doing? It's been all over the place lately. Who's on the SMCI wagon? It's been a doozy. It's moving quite a bit. Ryan, I was at the Celtics slash Suns game last night in Boston. I saw Celsius products all over the place. I was shocked. See, yeah. Celsius, it is becoming a huge brand. Um, you know, I honestly, I haven't bought any personally, um, but it might not be a bad idea. You know, maybe the next time the MTI is low, uh, doing some bottom fishing on Celsius. I didn't look at the value of it. If I had to guess, it might be overvalued. Um, but it's it's a good brand. You know, like you said, it's growing in Boston, growing here in North Carolina, all over on the West Coast. Um, see, I have SMCI, bought a diagonal on SMCI. I went from 15 to 57 in a month. John, there you go. That's a winner. What are the orange bars of MACD? So that is the histogram. If so, if you don't realize, so the MACD line, you know, obviously the teal and the black line there just shows you bullish and bearish trends. The histogram bars kind of show you like the momentum of those trends, you know, um, just kind of shows you strength or weakness in that trend. Right now, the histogram, it's an oscillator. So the oscillation point is at zero. Anything above that, the bars are up. Anything below that, bars are down. So right now with the bars down, you are seeing weakness in the trend when it comes to SMCI. Um, the three is converging to the eight. We zoom in here a little bit. Yeah, it's getting close. So if you're thinking about buying SMCI, you know, I'd like to buy on the momentum here if it can break that uh, resistance line up at the top. However, we do have a support line here right at just above a thousand dollars here so if it does dip back down and find some support around a thousand that might not be a bad entry point just i'd put a tight stop on it right below that support um but ultimately you know with the market pulling back right now shouldn't be shouldn't be buying a whole lot of stocks you know if you're holding smci it might be a good time to do a, a covered call on it and honestly a safe strike zone you know probably around that 1200 or just above that level of resistance there um, with a shorter expiration. So that way it's, you know, in your favor when it comes to the time decay. Um, let's see here. 
was at Wegmans two weeks ago, and they put out a pallet of CELH and asked if they got it, and the manager told me the pallet will be gone in a few hours at most. Whew. Yeah, I'm telling you, they, they, I've, who's tried Celsius? I, I've tried it twice. It's actually really good. It is really good. I, I won't hate on it. The product itself is really good. Um, let's see here. Let's go to screener. Oh. All right. Now we're going to go to top overrated stocks. So we've got NVIDIA, Celsius, EME, SMCI. Well, so the top rated stocks really do um, kind of go in with the Midas touch here. We're seeing a lot of overlap here. Let's see. Let's go to GCT. I know someone was just talking about them. Look, seventeen percent. Yeah, they were talking about the earnings. Who was it that mentioned GCT? It's up like almost twenty percent on earnings. Um, let's see here. Now this looks good. If you're thinking about getting this position, look at that three crossed or touched the eight-day moving average. However, after earnings today, big update here. We are seeing a level of resistance coming in soon, though. So just be careful of that. It looks like price action. See, the level of resistance comes in. Right around $41. Oh, sorry. Let's see here. The high. 43.56 is where the resistance level comes in. Right now, it's trading at 41 and a half. Um, I'd give the extra dollar away if I'm thinking about jumping in this position. But if we break that prior high on some momentum here, especially with the earnings, this stock could really soar. Now, look at Decker. Decker is down today, $918. We got new holdings. Um, let's see here. We're going to go to Decker real quick. Three month. Look, okay, that's a nice smooth chart here. Now the three is converging closer to the eight, so just be mindful of that. Let's see here. I'm drinking a Celsius sparkling orange right now. Maybe we need to get CL to sponsor Ryan. Hey, I wouldn't mind some free Celsius. But yeah, Decker, it's trending up nice and smooth here. Uh, buying on the pullback may not be the worst idea. We do have a level of support here, um, just below nine hundred dollars. So if you were to buy or enter this position. That's kind of where I'd put my stop there, right around that support line. Hope that positions is in TZX, TZX deferred account. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Where is, let's go to. All right, so here's the hot industries. So let's cover the hot industries here. We got computer makers. ETFs currency, building heavy construction, transportation ETFs, and building. So it looks like building and transportation and computers, that's a spot to be right now. So let's go to this. So we've got SMCI at the top of the list, no surprise. We've got Dell, OSS, HPQ, Lenovo, Apple, and Lenovo Group as well. Okay. So we've covered a lot of those ETFs. What kind of ETFs? Bitcoin, look at that. Everything is about Bitcoin. You guys know I'm a believer in Bitcoin. I know Glenn is not, but hey, whether or not you know it's sustainable for the long term, who knows? But there's definitely some money to be made right now. And the, I mean, look at the market cap of Bitcoin. It's like one and a half trillion dollars. Um, and there's a lot of big players in it. Um, you know, I personally don't own Bitcoin. I own Ethereum just for other reasons. Um, I'm a big Ethereum believer. And if you know the Ethereum uh, ETF is supposed to be, you know, it's on the um, radar right now. Hopefully, uh, they'll pass it, kind of like the Bitcoin ETF, which you know will probably hold, put the price up. So this here, the Bitcoin itself. So this is the Arc Bitcoin one, slightly down today. We got Big Wise here, Bitcoin. Let's click on this one here. So yeah, the three is converging close to the eight. However, you know the moving averages are still in our favor here. We did just break a level of resistance when it comes to that eat, or sorry support now becoming a level of resistance. We see an upper wick today touching that level of resistance with failure to pass it. Um, let's see here. We've got another Bitcoin going down today two percent. 
So when it comes to these ETFs currency, you can see Bitcoin pretty much taking the charge here. Bitcoin took a pullback. Yeah, I'm not too surprised. Um, it broke its all-time high. Uh, so if you're holding Bitcoin, I'd like to see it find a level of support at that previous all-time high. If it breaks it, you know, taking some profits off the table to you know buy the next dip, not the worst idea. Um, but me personally, my Ethereum's, I've just kind of when it comes to Bitcoin, uh, sorry, crypto in general, I usually buy them and just kind of forget about them. You know, Bitcoin is it, or Ethereum, you know, that is not money. The way I look at crypto is if I put money in crypto, I don't mind losing it. It's extra money. You know, it's either going to go to zero or to the moon. Because uh, <laughs> um, one time I bought Dogecoin many years ago, turned like 400 bucks into, I think it was just over a thousand Thought I was a genius, and then you know it shot up. Everyone knows Dogecoin now. Uh, would have been worth a lot more. So that's why I don't really sell them. You know, I'm more of a buy the dip on a, a cryptos. I do look at some moving averages. It's all technicals when it comes to cryptos. So that's one thing I do like. But you can see here. I mean, it's all Bitcoin when it comes to these currency ETFs. CI Bitcoin, Hashdex Bitcoin. Um, so you can see, you know, they've they've been uh, accelerating quite a bit here. Now, if we go to building heavy construction, let's see here. We got Sterling up at the top of the list. Oh, there's some consolidation here with Sterling. Let's see. Oh, it's loading now. Here we go. Look at that. So it jumped up there back in February. However, since the beginning of the month here, we see some tight consolidation. So, I'd, you know, the three looks like it's converging, may drop below the eight day here. So if you're holding this position, just keep an eye on those moving averages. If you're looking to get into this position, I would probably just draw some channel lines on here and see where we get a breakout. Now, as far as uh, Bitcoin ETFs, like I said, I hold Ethereum, so I'm no expert on Bitcoin ETFs by any means. Um, you know, the grayscale one's definitely a good one here. So if we go back, you got ARC, Bitwise, Valkyrie. Probably go with one of the bigger ones. Um, honestly, what I'm waiting for is a dip in uh, these crypto ETFs. I'm probably going to buy some options, some leap options on them if I can get good prices. Um, but again, got to look at the chart when it comes to those cryptos because it's all technicals. There's no fundamentals here. Now, look at this. BDRY. Still doing good. Now, i um been promoting this ETF for quite some time since the Panama uh, drought issue here. You can see like it's gone up quite a bit here. Just over the last three months, it was trading around $10. Now it's up to $16. So that's, I mean, that's up, what, 60%. Definitely good here. Have you heard of PI Network Crypto? You mine it yourself on your phone. I've actually heard of that, Mark. I know people that use their phone, even their cars, you can mine crypto. It's crazy. <laughs> um I haven't tried it myself, though. Has Glenn shaved his head? <laughs> no, I don't know if Glenn shaved his head, but he might be catching a tan. He's at the beach right now. I know he's heading out to the Outer Banks. Uh, it's beautiful, the Outer Banks. If you've never been, definitely uh, recommend it. It's absolutely gorgeous, and it's not very touristy. It's a very low-key area, um, so if you want something that's not touristy at the beach, more nature-related, definitely something to look at here. Uh, let's see here. we got TPOR. Invesco Aero in defense here. I'm not surprised that defense is taking a, a move up to the upside. I can see that. Let's see here. Click on this. Past three months from 88 to a hundred dollars. So yeah, I mean, that's up, you know, 10, 15% there. Do you think he did spray a on six pack? <laughs> Glenn is probably listening and is in the chat but not saying anything. Glenn, are you here? Glenn, talk to us if you're here. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Let's go stock pick ideas. And you can see a lot of things are pulling back here. Even some of these hot industries, the computer makers, ETFs. Um, let's go to transportation here. Oh, wait, not that's the one we just did. ETFs, transportation. It was, oh, building, maintenance, and services. This was the last one. We got EME, IES Holding, Rollins, Mr. Group. So the buildings are still hot today. A lot of these are actually up. You know, at least the top five are up here. A little mixed after that. But for the most part, the top of these stocks are up. 
I know the we still have a lot of money to spend as far as the infrastructure deal that the uh, government passed. So maybe that's, you know, investors are seeing optimism there. Uh, flexing and pointing to the beach. Which trusted mining site can you recommend me? Um, again, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't mind crypto. I own 3.2 Ethereum's. That's most of my portfolio. And then I got uh, some random uh, smaller mean coins and a couple others like Stella, um, Solana. But like 90% of my portfolio is in Ethereum. So I got into it pretty early. Um, so I hold those. Glenn is enjoying a cup of Bestella. <laughs> Uh, that's if he's got a coffee maker in his car. Because I know from here, it's about a six-hour trip to Outer Banks. I mean, it, it's out in the middle of nowhere. I haven't been there too often because it, it's a pretty far drive. I can probably just drive to Florida in the same time. I am scrolling through the top 100 VST stocks. You can see the rotation and other industries happening. I believe it. Um, you know, I definitely believe that. Let's see here. Sorry, I'm using Glenn's uh, portfolio here. All right, let's go to featured screens. Let's see which ETFs. See, look at the bullish ETFs here. All right, energy looks up. Oil is up. So oil is up. So that's two times. So oil is up probably half a percent. Since Gush is up 1%, let's take a look at oil. Oh, look at that. It definitely broke its level of resistance. Now becoming level of support. All the moving averages in our favor. Like I said, oil is on a run right now. The next level of resistance, if we go back to six months, it's up here. Oh, my fingers are a little big for this. Right around $40, that level of resistance comes in. We're trading at 38 39 So just be careful of that. We're seeing an upper wick today. Sorry, that accepts tags. Scrolling to the top. Tax ID. Um, let's see here. But yeah, all these moving averages. You know, oil is doing good. If you didn't watch the video last night, definitely recommend it. Let's see here. We've got, oh, semiconductors. Bullish, not doing so good. Here's the SOXL. I like trading SOXL and XOXS because it gives you exposure to all the, you know, most of the semiconductors. Obviously, NVIDIA is probably heavily weighted on that. Uh, but it's three times leverage. So if you don't want to trade options yet, you want to leverage semiconductors, you can do it with SOXL. That's the bullish one. SOXS is the bearish one. So you can play both sides. So if you're not familiar with options and you want to play these big semiconductor companies leveraged both to the upside and the downside xoxs soxl great way great experience to get in there um, and learn how to trade you know both sides of something but obviously if you know options you know you can do a million option trades on the on the individual stocks themselves but if i had to guess nvidia is probably heavily weighted on soxl and xoxs now we got TQQQ, that's triple leverage. Q's to the downside today. QLD to the downside. Oh, gold. Look, gold is moving here. Let's take a look at gold. I did a video on gold in January, um, and I saw that it was hitting some highs. Let's see here. Yeah, it's taking off right now since it's February. Yeah, January is a rough month. Let's go to three months here. Yeah, I did about mid-January. I said now is not necessarily the time to be buying gold, but definitely put it on your radar here. Um, I think there's some factors that might push gold higher. I'm in SOXL, still learning. Hey, SOXL, SOXS, great ways to learn how to play to the upside. Because, you know, like most investors, you typically learn first to just buy stocks long. And then eventually you learn about contra ETFs, play to the downside. Uh, and then you learn about you know both sides of ETFs, so you play both sides of the market, and then typically you go into options. That's kind of the the rotation there. Uh, but once you learn options, I mean, you can 
learn how to do loop-de-loops in the market and make money. <laughs> As most of you guys know, I sold my GDX short calls and went long with GDX, was under 26. I did it based on the COTS data and those calls out to July are up about 177%. Okay, John. Now, what's your target on that? You know, you're up 177%, but that could always change. So just make sure you put uh, your goals in place. Now, this is one I like to play. This is the volatility index, UVXY. This is a very short term play here. Anytime there's some fear in the market, this is usually a good one to play. Now, this is leverage VIX, 1.5% here. You can see some tight consolidation. Oh. Why is it not zooming out like that? But you can see it on the rise today. Look, this level of resistance coming in right at $8. So it's 734 right now. So if the market continues to drop, um, you know, if this can break that level of resistance, this is a good way to hedge your portfolio. Now, UVXY is typically held, you really you just hold it like a couple days at most. You know, it's a very active trade. You usually just buy it. When there's a lot of fear in the market and the market's dropping and then you'll know, take your profits and run you know definitely not something to hold uh very long by any means here we've got boil this is natural gas here so let's see what natural gas is doing today a lot of consolidation oh wait why did it go back to uvxy there we go they'll go boil tight trading range uh, why does it keep going back to uvxy that's weird Boil? No, I did not click on that. All right, there we go. Yeah, you can see the consolidation here, especially since mid-February. Um, you know, not much going on here with natural gas itself. All the moving averages are kind of mixed. You see the MACD line converging to that signal line here. So no real trend. So if you're trading natural gas, just be careful. This looks pretty tight trading right now. I'd like to see a breakout either way. But natural gas has been pretty volatile lately. Uh, you are awesome at options, John. I'm always interested in your post. <laughs> All right. So let's do this. Let's create a watch list today. I'm going to be taking your stocks in just a moment here. Uh, two, 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 three, fifteen. All right, go ahead and put in your stocks. I'll start typing them in here. S O U N. A L A R, Alarm Tech. Okay, Mara. Palantir, C C J, A M D, Clean Spark. Nice. Oracle. Phyllis, you watch that video uh, that Glenn did on Oracle? PCCAR. That one is not in our system. FNGD. COPX. Ooh, copper. Okay. McKesson Corp, LPG. I don't know how many have. I'm going to give you a couple more, though. YES, yes. I don't know. I think that was an answer. DRCT, DRCT. Okay, Digital Direct, gotcha. LAC. Yeah, Lithium America. Um, That one's been taking a big hit lately. Let's see here. Lithium in general. LAR, we already have on the list. Mod. How many stocks we got here? Four, seven, ten, sixteen. We'll do four more. We'll have an even 20. PCAR. 
There we go. We got PCAR. TSM. Hey, Taiwan Semiconductor. I love Taiwan Semiconductor. If you've ever seen the videos I've done on semiconductors, Taiwan Semi is the king when it comes to semiconductors. Without them, this whole uh, AI revolution, wouldn't e we wouldn't even be in the game. Uh, I mean, they, they are really are. Uh, they're the main manufacturer of NVIDIA. So NVIDIA, if anything ever happened at TSM, NVIDIA would be having a rough day because they produce all of their chips. So we've got 4, 8, 12, 16. All right, we've got 20 here, so create watch list. We'll do uh, doo -doo. March 15th. Oh, uh, before I go, definitely want to wish everyone a happy St. Patty's Day weekend. For, let's see here. TAM is also opening fabrication facilities in Arizona. You mean TSM? Yeah, they've been uh, they've been doing that, and they're opening a facility in Germany. So after COVID and with the you know China tensions, um, Western governments are pretty much telling Taiwan Semi they got to start building manufacturing plants over here so that's why you're seeing them in japan and europe and united states now um so that was the big concern because tsm was taking a big hit and even warren buffett bought it but you know he, he sold it shortly after he bought it because of the the china tensions there he saw a lot of risk involved um me personally i always been telling people if you ever hear of those tensions rise uh intel is a great play um you know they're a domestic manufacturer um you know, God forbid, but, you know, if anything ever happened in Taiwan, uh, a lot of, a lot of semi stocks would be in trouble because they produce AMD's chips, uh, arm, uh, Apple chips, uh, Nvidia. So they produce a lot of the big players. Um, so definitely, you know, just realize if anything escalates in Taiwan, uh, that's going to be a, a rough day for semiconductors and probably a good time to you know hedge those positions or, or i would probably be doing shorts uh or puts in general if that ever happened all right here we go we got mod i mean that's for a three-month chart that's about as beautiful as you're gonna get here nice lower left to upper right the price action hub look at that it's finding a support right at that 20 day moving average there you see just broke above it today the three cross below the eight so if you actually wanted to buy on a dip i know it's a down day but if you were insisting on doing it, um, this would be a, a good position to do it. Now, look at the MACD, though. MACD is against us. So, yeah, again, probably wait for some green lights in the color guard to be you know, getting into this position. But it looks like it's trying to find a level of support here. So if you're in bond, um, honestly, I'd probably put a stop just below $80 just in case. Because if we get another swing low, it probably, could, you know, it probably would go lower because that would be a definition of a downtrend. What can Joey not do? Uh, John says, Mark, good idea. When I put on my Google TV, I get VectorVest videos showing up all the time. And even the shorts Joey is making. YouTube videos run on time. What can Joey not do? <laughs> Joey's the man. What can I say? Joey for Prez, right? Joey for Prez. All right, let's see here. Next one. All right, we got direct. Ooh, let's see here. Direct digital. Ooh, big candlestick today. Nice breakout. Look at this. Broke just above this level of resistance here. That would have been the entry point. You see the break here. We got follow through the next day, which it was yesterday. Uh, that follow through came in. The open was at 26.93. Now it has shot up. So yeah, everything looks good there. I mean, a nice just consolidation pattern. Oh, you know, during about right here to about right here. You got your breakout. Moving averages are in your favor. Follow through the next day. That's when I would have bought it, and then yeah, it's rising today. You know, nothing, nothing bad to say about this position. If you are in direct, you know, again, have some moving averages in place. Have have a plan in place. You know, because this stock went from what ten dollars to thirty five dollars in the last three months. I mean, don't be so greedy. You now, if you, if you've been holding on to this position longer than three months. At least take some profits off the table. You know, gamble with the house money. That's what I like to do. You know, once, especially with options because they're so volatile. Once I'm playing with house money, I'll take a little bit more risk. But if it's my money, you know, I, I want to protect it. Uh, but it's nice when you're playing with house money, right? Everyone likes to play with house money. Alar, look at oh, down day to day. Look, it closed lower. 
Wow. You know, it opened, sorry, it opened higher today. And then we're seeing the selling pressure, three in the eight. It looks like it's trying to find a level support right at that eight tier. Um, so if it drops back below the eight, definitely would be more concerned. But that 20-day moving average is looking like a strong level support over the last three months. We see one touch back here, dip below it, and then went right back above it. And then another touch here right on it. Is that 20-day with that level support? Nice. Anytime there's a moving average and a level support or level resistance that match, like you see here, always look at that. Because that, you know, if you're because price action is finding both the level support with the actual level support and with the moving average it, it just makes a good setup you can see that setup had follow through here the next day three cross below the eight and we're still uh with upward momentum even with the macd the macd lines above the signal line histogram bars are positive i like this position it is down today um if i'm going to get out of this you see the low yesterday 1650 again that would probably be a good stop there and all depends when you bought it and what your plan was but that would be good Eric says, gold, hello, silver. <laughs> Commodities are moving right now. All right, here we've got AMD. If you've ever seen my videos, this is the level of support I'm looking at, that 180 level. Um, if it breaks below that, uh, definitely not a good sign. But look at this. It found that level of support. Let's zoom in here. Looks like we might get a bullish engulfing candlestick here. Yeah, if we get some price actions here. Ah, the open that day was 192.92. Right now we're at 192.83. So we are about 10 cents away from doing a, a bullish engulfing candlestick right at a level of support, right at these moving averages here. So if we can get a, a bullish engulfing candlestick with some follow through and you're not an AMD or if you sold AMD and you're looking for a dip, this might be the dip. Because I mean, this was above $220 just what, about a week ago here. That's the candlestick I was worried about earlier when I mentioned it. That upper wick. With follow through the next day, definitely would have tried to take some profits there, especially with the three, you know, crossing below the eight day moving average. That gets you out around two hundred dollars. Um, but you could potentially buy in. Like I said, we might be seeing a bullish and golfing candlestick here. We got one ninety two eighty three. The open yesterday was at ninety two ninety two. So we're ten cents away from a bullish and golfing candlestick. Now look at the MACD here. MACD is against us. Histogram bars are showing momentum to the downside. So just be careful. You know, the primary wave is down, but if we get the bullish of golf and candlestick with some follow through come Monday, this could actually be a really nice trade setup. But the market, you know, it's still not liking that inflation data. So again, I'm more bearish than bullish right now. But like I said, not trading this week uh, just because of my shoulder injury. Got a lot of projects here at VectorVest. Uh, can we talk about Apple? You know what, uh, Richard? Well, I took the stocks list. Uh, we got 20 right now. Remind me when we get to the end, we got add Apple because I know that's a big player. And a lot of people are interested in that one. We've got Novo Nordisk here. Again, look, consolidation over the last six days here. If you're looking to either short or buy this position long, I would just put some uh, some channel lines here and look for the breakout. You see the top line here. The high is at 138.28. I'd like to see that high taken out if you're going to be bullish. If you're bearish... You got the resistance line right here. We're sitting on it, approaching it again today. If we break out to the downside, then you can do that. MACD, though, still in our favor, but it's losing momentum, you can see. We got Picar here. Uh, this is beautiful. Nice lower left to upper right. Very little volatility. Each little pullback seems like a nice uh, opportunity to buy. Now, right now, it looks like with today's candlestick, it's trying to find a level of support at this eight-day moving average. Now, if it breaks the eight-day moving average, you know, again, just protect profits because the next moving average comes in around 128 for level support, right around this level as well. That could actually be a good entry point because it matches the moving average. So if uh, price actually continues to fall, I could see it definitely finding level support here. And the MTI, if you've noticed, the MTI has been pulling back. It's around like 1.1 right now. So it's kind of in the middle. Um, it'd be nice if it drops back down below. It obviously depends what your plan is. All right, so we have Novo, we have Picard, Taiwan Semiconductor. Let's see here. Again, this is the maker of NVIDIA. Nova has been great. IBD stock for all those earning trades over the past six. Yeah, it's a good one. 
Look at this. TSM has been riding that momentum from NVIDIA here. Now, if we go back to a year, so from about here to here, is that was the uh, concern for the you know the China U.S. relations. However, you know nothing really too crazy happened there, other than some you know some chip uh, restrictions. However, uh, but look at it now with Nvidia, SMCI, the rise of AI, the popularity of AI. This stock went from eighty dollars to a high of almost one hundred and sixty, so about doubled in price. Now, again, without Taiwan Semi, none of this would be possible because uh, they're the ones who produce the major computer chips. We see a nice strong level support here. So if you miss this run, and look at that, it's finding level support. Remember when I told you if you see a level support that matches a moving average here, especially like a 20 or 8 day, you know, very popular one that a lot of investors use, typically you'll find some support there. And you can see it gapped down, however, with price action today, it is rising, which is nice. You know, it's still lower than yesterday's close, down $2.65, but the price is rising today. So it looks like some buyers are trying to you know, keep it right at that level of support. But great company, though. Great company. Just you know, be aware of the political risk when it comes to TSM. All right, we've got silver here. Look at silver. I told you commodities are taking a, taking a spin. I should probably do a video on silver next week. Now that I think about it, I did gold in January. I just did oil yesterday. Uh, but yeah, let me look at the charts on silver. This looks really good. All the moving averages are in our favor right here. If we see, the only problem is if you're not already in it, look at this, we're at a strong level of resistance. You can see it right here. Look at this top candlestick here, this wick showing a lot of selling pressure. We're seeing that again today with a little bit of a wick up at the top. So if you're not in silver, um, especially this ETF here, can you talk about NVIDIA and SMCI? Amir, we did talk about NVIDIA and SMCI. Uh, silver is getting interesting to me, penny-wise. Yeah, no, silver looks good. Now, if you're not already in it, I'd wait for, you know, break above this. Or look at a spot silver uh, ETF or spot silver itself and see what it's trading at. But according to this ETF here, silver is right at a level of resistance. But... The magnitude of this trend is very strong. You see the histogram bars, the MACD, even the moving averages, they're all moving up. So I'm just, I'd wait on breakthrough. I mean, price action is at 665. The resistance comes in around 680. So to give up, you know, 10, 15 cents just to get some confirmation, I would do that. SPY, please break the uptrend channel. How far can it go? Let's see here. Now we've got McKesson Corp. Oh, this is another good one here. Moving averages all in our favor. Oh, no, why did it go back? There we go. All right, we see some uh, tight trading range. Look at this, moving averages close together. I'm not messing with this one. I mean, there's no direction here on this stock. I um, mean, you know, obviously you can see the, the channel. Here's the bottom of the channel here, the level support. So if you're gonna be bearish or do any uh, you know, bearish options, shorting, I'd wait to see it break this level of support. Because the moving averages are kind of mixed, showing indecision. And as far as upside, that's your high right there. Um, so break that previous candlestick. Let's see here. That was on March 5th. The high is 537. So that's your channel right there. You know, I'd, I'd wait for a breakout. But with MACD dropping, you see MACD dropping there. And that's a and price action staying steady. So you can see that momentum of the trend losing it. But today, I mean, the, it did gap lower. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. It's down, you know, 31 cents, so not too bad. But tight trading range. So, again, just wait for a breakout. That's what I would do. Just wait for a breakout. Let the trade come to you, right? Don't be rushing the trade. Oh. All right, LPG. All right, so it looks like it's trying to buck this downtrend here. Actually, look at this. That's a perfect head and shoulders. Look, there's one shoulder. There's your head. There's another shoulder, right? Forming that level of support. Price action here. I would just break. wait till it breaks out of the zone. You know, once it gets to the upside out of the zone, get some confirmation, I'd take the trade. That's a good one there. That's actually a really good trade, especially with some bottom fishing. Was that Dorian? What kind of company is Dorian? Anybody know? Who gave this stock? Because that's actually a really good trade. Like you see the moving averages here, the three and the eight. 
But like I said, it's a little early right now. But that looks like a, a head and shoulders, a reverse head and shoulders, because it's a downtrend. But yeah, that might be a that's actually might be a really good shipping. Okay. Hey, and shipping stocks are uh, are hot right now. You know, I've done the videos on the Red Sea, the conflict there. The play wasn't oil. If you watch the videos, the play was shipping. Shipping was doing good. Because I did those videos, I think, like back in, what, November, December? So let's see here. Yeah. So this is the Red Sea and the Panama Canal. You can see I started that probably in the fall. So we had shipping issue. Oh, gas transport. Okay. However, the news you know, kind of fades away. You can see the pullback here, the selling pressure. But, I mean, look at that. That's a perfect head and shoulders on the downside. That's a good reverse head and shoulders. So keep an eye on this one. This might, uh, this might actually work out pretty well. I'm going to have to write this one down, LPG. Oh, God. Can't turn that quick. <laughs> uh, shoulder. Let's see here. All right, let's go to the next one here. We got LPG. Oracle. Okay, Oracle. This was the big gap up. Ooh, exactly what Glenn feared. Broke to the downside of those candlesticks here. We are in the gap right now, but you can see the buyers coming in trying to wait till you get older. <laughs> Yo, man. Yeah, my birthday is next week, and I'm a, I will officially be closer to 40 than I am 30. Um, so I think my uh, crazy snow skiing days are, are behind me. But if it, Oracle, look at it, just be fearful of the gap. I mean, it's a huge gap here. Oracle, I watched the video. Obviously, it's got you know great potential in the future, um, but with the MTI dropping, the market pulling back, you know, depending on what your strategy is here, I'm not a buyer right now. Doing dumb fun things when young bites you later. <laughs> LPG has RT below one, so I would wait. I, uh, yeah. Like I said, uh, John, what, I'd wait to that prior high at least. Um, but that's more of a bottom fishing strategy. So yeah, the RT is probably going to be lower than one. Uh, you you got to just take the... Uh, again, that, that's if you want to take the risk. But the head and, that reverse head and shoulder patterns, that's why I was saying that was a looking like a pretty good trade setup. Let's see here. Oracle. But yeah, Oracle, if you're not already in it, I, I'm, not a rush, I'm not in a rush to get it. I think we can get a better deal. Um, but as far as shorting it, I mean, you've got a big gap to fill there. So if you're you know, if, if you got the, the risk tolerance to do an option on it, um, you know, or short the position itself, uh, we definitely have a gap in Oracle. So that might not be a bad play. And we got an upper wick showing that selling pressure. It looks like it's trying to stay right at that three-day moving average, you can see. Um, so if I had to guess, it could probably potentially get as low as to that eight-day moving average there. And then we can find a level of support. If it doesn't want to fill the gap, the level supports right here around 118. Ouch, Pennywise. <laughs> chocolate fountain shoulder. No, no, no chocolate fountain shoulder injury. <laughs> I'd be carrying a lot of lot of chocolate if that was the case. All right, here's sound. I know we've had a lot of questions about sound. Oh wait, why did it go? There we go. Let's see here. Yep. It's been on the move. Yeah, I was jumping for 20 of those years. <laughs> Um, so look at the three is above the eight, not necessarily, um, you know, if you're in this position, I mean, again, this stock, we'll look at this from six months ago, this stock went from $2 to just over $10 yesterday. This is a big move to the upside, but the three is above the eight, the 20 day. I mean, all the moving averages look good. Mac D's in our favor. Um, Obviously, this support zone here. What's the top of this candlestick? See the uh, the close was six eighty six, which is the bottom of this support zone. That's my stop, six eighty six. That's my hard stop right there. You know, because I, I, I'll because with the I mean, depending on when you bought it, of course. But with this kind of move, you know, with this stock moving so much, you got to give it a little wiggle room. Otherwise, you're just going to get stopped out. But at the bottom of the support zone here touches this candlestick which the close is 686. So whoever was asking about sound, if you're in it, that's my stop. Again, you can always get back into it um, or at least start protecting profits as, if it drops below that. Who did give me sound? Is Lunar good to get back in? Oh man, the Space Rover stock? Oh, I, we'd have to look at that one. 
But Lunar is uh, <laughs> that that's news. That's all news driven. Pennywise, that is cool, but terrifying. Have you kept track of how many jumps you've done? <laughs> All right, so there's sound. You saw my hard stop there. As far as getting back into this position, and what's 686, the high is, where's the high here? 1025, I like to see that high break. I like to see that high broken if I'm gonna get in, just to see if it's still got this momentum to the upside. Now, sound, SoundHound AI is the one who got a deal with NVIDIA, is that correct? Anybody know? I'm pretty sure they're the one, they're the one who got the, the deal with NVIDIA. So LAC, I was telling you, this thing's taking a hard hit. Lithium in general. Jazz said, yep, okay, I thought so. Lithium is taking a huge hard hit. I'll be honest with you. Lithium, um, we've all seen the articles. EV sales are down. Yeah, okay, NVIDIA invested. That's what I thought. I knew they had a connection there. I mean, if, if any little company has news with NVIDIA, um, let's be honest, the hype alone is going to move that stock. <laughs> Whether the fundamentals are bad or who knows what the company's doing, but if NVIDIA, NVIDIA was a bull trap for today. <laughs> oh, man. We looked at NVIDIA. Yeah, it's been pulling back a little bit. But again, you can see the MTI. It hit those high levels of 1.5. Market rose for a little bit more, but now the MTI is starting to roll over. We see the market starting to show a little bit of weakness here. Um, NVIDIA is up today. Right now, it's up almost 1%. So... I mean, semiconductors and AI, that momentum, is it's hard to bet against. Um, I'm not going to bet against it. Sound has made has not made any money so far. No, it hasn't. But when you get a news, you know, when you get a deal with NVIDIA, investors are going to push that stock up. So, yeah, be careful. You know, you'd, you'd have to look at the fundamentals. If the fundamentals are weak. Stick to that 686 stop. Because once the hype is over, I mean, it could go back down a lot more. I mean, it was $2 not that long ago. Um, so just remember that. Now look at this. Lithium. Oh, look at it. So look at it. We got the downtrend. We've got another reverse head and shoulders. There's your head. There's shoulder. Shoulder. Remember I told you about that other stock? The other stock, we were about right here in the same pattern. So you want to take it out. There's the takeout. And look at that. Big move to the upside. So that's what you're looking for. I forgot. I think that was LNG we were talking about. Uh, the head and, or LNP. Market was greed for almost 18 weeks. Correction is necessary. Juan, I think we're all, we all know. Um, but hey, if you're still buying stocks and you're still holding stocks, I mean, you're part of that greed, right? Oh, <laughs> you're part of that greed. Uh, so just be careful right now because, I mean, I have a feeling when it, when it drops, it's going to drop pretty hard. Um, so just protect profits. We're starting to see some weakness. And again, I did the short yesterday. We finally... Inflation data, the past couple of inflation data, the market kept going up. This one, it did not. But LAC, look at this. We do have a strong wick yesterday to the upside. So just be careful of that. Uh, resistance comes in here. If I'm a buyer, it's going to be around 7. I'd give up the 30 cents just to show some confirmation of yesterday. Uh, but just be careful because we got another level of resistance. But that head and shoulder, reverse head and shoulders pattern, that's good there. LAC government bailed out the company. Okay. Um, wouldn't be surprised because the lithium and the, the government's role in trying to get EVs going. So we got global copper. The copper, whoo, hitting highs here. Three, eight, all the moving averages are good. We got a lot of momentum here. I like copper. You know, just want to take out today's high, buy on an up day. It's up 2.3% today. Um, it's making big moves to the upside. So if you're already in it, not necessarily a, in a rush to get out. But I would put a stop right above $40 if you're already in it. Um, if not, you know, just be careful because it's a lot of momentum to the upside here. You can see it. You know, this is the type of stock I would put like a trailing stop on, ratchet, something that, you know, protects profits. Oh, it's loading. All right, we got CCJ here. Oh, no. Yeah, not good. Uh, it's in a downtrend. Trying to find a level of support. You can see the support. If it breaks, if it breaks this support line, I'm out the trade. You know, don't want to lose any more money there. It went from fifty-two dollars down to forty, so it's already down what twenty percent, twenty-five percent. Lithium and air, rare earth metals are mostly mined in China, so we're trying to rebuild our mining capabilities. Rare earth materials is the future. If you're not familiar with, with rare earths, 
that is what's needed um, for today's technology. And yes, China does have a monopoly on rare earth mining. We should all know that. Um, as far as lithium, a lot of that is in South America. And we've actually found a lot of lithium deposits here in North America that they've started. I think the largest one in the world was discovered out by, uh, was that like Arizona, California? Is out west somewhere? Yep, MP is the biggest rare earth operation outside China. Okay. But yeah, the United States um, needs to get in that direction of rare earth and lithium for sure. Especially if we're going to go Nevada. That's what, okay, Nevada, yeah. So we found a huge deposit there. I mean, it's the largest in the world. Uh, I think I did a short on that a couple months ago. So once that's operational, but again, finding more lithium as it becomes more popular and there's more mining, um, if the demand is weak, that's going to bring down the price of lithium, right? And so we're finding more lithium. We have weakness in EVs. Uh, so that being said, I think that's putting a lot of pressure on it, lithium. So I'm not... You know, it's supply and demand. If we're finding a lot more and the EV demand is lower, uh, it's going to bring down the price of lithium. But that's kind of needed, you know, if you want EVs to be cheaper and more common on the road, right? So lithium's got to be cheaper. The battery's got to be cheaper. So, and these stocks are going to take hits of that, right? The issue is mining capacity. I can believe that. All right, we got a crowd favorite here, Palantir. Oh. Get back over. Why did it do that? There's Palantir. Oh, no. Palantir. All the moving averages are dropped. We're seeing pressure on it today. Not a buyer. Not a buyer. I'd be protecting profit. It was $28 a couple days ago. Now it's less than $24. $23.56. So what is that? $4 on a $30, $28 star. Ooh. Try to do the math on that. About 10%, 10% drop. Uh, oil, oil well, brine in Alberta contains lithium. Yeah, lithium is getting, people are finding it more and more now. We see the MACD down. I'm not a buyer, not a buyer at all. There's my hard stop, 22 the support. Because if we break this support here, look at this. We got a gap to fill. That gap is going to be tempting for investors. Palantir will easily drop below 20 bucks. I believe it, especially if the market's pulling back like it is, you know. If it continues to pull back, if it breaks this 22 support here, my fear is it's one of the, it's going to want to fill that gap. I don't mind holding the bag with Palantir. I don't I don't like to be a bag holder because you can always sell the bag and buy back in. But I I get it I get it we've we've all had we've all done it. Some some stocks I just buy and just forget about them and I might add to them on a dip. Palantir may not be the worst stock to do that with. We got Clean Spark here. Now it had a big high momentum run here, but look, consolidation. It's just a consolidation right now. The moving averages are not in our favor. They're all bearish. You see the support level there, right at 15. So my stop, hard line is 15. You daring to disagree with Glenn about Palantir? Oh, Glenn. No, Palantir is a great stock, but you know, look at the chart. I, mean, I give you unbiased opinion on Palantir. Um, it's trending down. Like I said, if it breaks 22, just be mindful that there's a gap to fill on the next go around. All right. Oh, but yeah, this one here, hard stop at 15. All the moving averages are against us. So I'm not going to say I'm a buyer of it right now, but if you're holding it. Oh, let's see here. There we go. We got BMO. Someone recommended this. This is uh Rex three times. Event. What is BMO? What is BMO Rex? Anyone know? I will say it's in a strong downtrend. It's got the sell recommendation. Nothing really good here going for it. Um, the only thing is if you're willing to take the risk, I see a channel forming. If we break outside that channel, we see the MACD. The histogram bar is in our favor right now. But it, it's a risky play. You know, you it's a sell recommendation. It is up 4% today. But look at this. The moving average is a pretty tight. I'd wait for a breakout. If I'm a buyer... That's my, uh, that's about 450. I'd give up. Oh, that's the Fang stocks. Okay. Yeah, what would Tesla? I, I can see why that's going down. Inverse. Oh, it's inverse. Okay. But yeah, no, this is, uh, 
Yeah, if I get a breakout there to the upside, that might be a good trade. A lot of tight consolidation. But again, if it's inverse, uh, you're betting against the fang. Let's see here. All right. Oh, we got Mara. Mara's not doing very good either. Moving averages all in our favor. That's my hard stop right here. It's going to be the support line. This middle one. If my t fingers can touch it, I got to zoom in. Yeah, so my support line is going to be around 1640. If only there was a button you could push to see what a stock is all about. <laughs> There is a button here. So if you go in the top right, these three little dots, you go to view report. If you've never done that before, uh, I usually just like to ask you to get comments. But yeah, if you do this, it'll bring you right to the stock analysis. And it'll tell you, look, it's a digital asset technology company, which engages in mining cryptos, gives you the value, the safety, all that good stuff. So if you've never done that feature before, again, if you're on the chart, top right corner, you got three little dots here. That is where you want to go. That was for you and BMO. <laughs> All right, let's see here. We've got one last stock, I believe. Yep, MP Materials. Downtrend. Who's it? Who's holding this bag? Someone's holding this bag. Don't lie. When did you get it? Is that why you put it on the list? You want to know when it's going to rise again? Because I don't know. It just hit a new low yesterday. All the moving averages are down. All crypto miners are going down right before the halving. What's up with that? Well, I will say after the halving, so the way mining works, as there's less Bitcoin, this is from what I've learned, there's less Bitcoins, right? So now we're reaching the halfway point. So the miners have to process more transactions. So it's going to take longer, more energy, more effort to get Bitcoins out. So as far as the miners, I'm more of the route of, I don't like going the mining route. I'd rather, if there's spot ETFs on Bitcoin, I'd rather do that. I would just feel more comfortable with that. Uh, especially after the halving, because they're having to do more work, spend more energy, spend more money to get coins. Um, Cause they're gonna be harder and harder to get uh, these Bitcoins. That's why it's an anti-inflationary coin. That's the whole point of Bitcoin. It's anti-inflationary. There's only a finite amount and they get harder and harder to get. Uh, so that puts pressure on supply of Bitcoin. And especially with the ETF as popular as it is, if there's pressure on supply and there's a lot of demand, right? It's going to push the price up. That's the theory behind Bitcoin. Um, but M MP materials, I mean, just look at it here. There's nothing good to say as far as positive. As far as bearish, if we could take out yesterday's low at, uh, was that 1344? I'd probably, you know, short it or if there's options, put some puts on there. AMD going back up now. But yeah, um, see all crypto miners are going to, okay, if I have Pennywise, I cashed out of MP, but looking to get back in. If you're looking to get back into MP, I mean, the aggressive route would be right above this support zone if we could get price action above that. But with today's candlestick, let's zoom in here. We're showing that upper wick. I'm not seeing that, but you know, things can change in the future. If we get break above this, I would start opening up my position because if we could break above that, the three might go above the eight, probably around the same time if I had a guess, and then maybe add to my position if we can break above this consolidation point here, which the high is about 1560, 1570. What's the high of this one? Yeah, 157. Yeah, so about 1580. We'll give it a couple cents higher from that. Um, I would, you know, add more to the position, but, uh, yeah, going in here, that would be my first position. Cause I like to tiptoe into a position and tiptoe out, you know, I don't like to go all in and all out, but that would be my first step looking to break this one and then add to it here. And definitely by then, if we break this one, all the moving averages should be in our favor. Um, but yeah, so we went over a lot of stocks today. Um, you know, like I said, just filling in for Glenn today. He will be back next week. He'll, he's gone Monday, so I am doing the live stream for him Monday. Looking forward to that. We're going to do a lot of analysis. Uh, might be a little bit different. He did show me some things, um, but I might add to it as well. Um, 
give you guys, but we'll see with the market. Ryan, when will you start buying SQQQ? Um, as far as hedging the market, like I said, it's hard to bet against uh, the semiconductors right now. Um, I'm starting to see evidence of it, um, but especially if you know AMD drops below its 20 day exponential, uh, Nvidia is up today 1%. So I'm not necessarily a buyer right this second. I'd like to see a little bit more follow. I'm more of a covered call time right now. You know, put insurance on your long positions. Um, you know, start protecting profits right now. We're kind of like right here. The market's kind of trying to go over, but we're not there quite yet. All we have is a primary wave down since yesterday. We do have follow through today. So if you're in bearish positions, you know, just put in stops because who knows how this market's going to be, right? <laughs> uh, tomorrow, or sorry, Monday could be up a couple hundred points. It's, you know, it's been a pretty crazy rally. So if you're thinking about betting against the market, you know, just tiptoe into it. Don't go all in, okay? Uh, but hey, again, my name's Ryan. It's been a pleasure. Everybody have a happy, a safe St. Patty's Day. We will see you next week, okay?